praise God. So last week I started uh, a topic, uh, new man or a new man, depending on how you want to use it. So we went through uh, what I call introduction, though it's more than introduction, but I normally like to say that, praise God, hallelujah. So I say that uh, if we have a new, there must be an old somewhere or old existed sometimes ago. So this old, many of us tend to visit sometimes. We try to travel back to the old. But we thank God that uh, we have the Holy Spirit now that normally helps us to to see that, hey, this is your whole self. You know, uh, there's a scripture that says that uh, if we do that, if we do go back to our old ways, we are like a dog to return to his vomit to eat it up again. You know, it's disgusting. That's not nice. And we know we are not, a, I mean, we are not uh, dogs and we don't do that. But when we talk about new life, we need to, to understand some things because I discovered that um, until you start to live in your newness of life, you will not achieve some things and you will not attain some things. They will elude you because you don't know how to get there. And that is why many of us go round about trying to find ways to get to our expectation. But when it's not the way of the Lord, it always leads us back to a starting point. And many people that are proud will not acknowledge that they are struggling. And they will keep trying, keep trying as the year is going by. By the time they realize many people would have been so old that there is no more strength to start all over again. So, it is very important for us to get it right when we see our strength. Hallelujah. Now, what I said to us last week was as well that uh, many people accepted Jesus as their Savior, but not as their Lord. And that is the problem of many believers. Am I saved? Yes. No question about it. You have confessed Christ as your Lord and what? Okay, you have confessed Christ. <laughs> Don't let me say, as your Lord. Because many people don't accept him as the Lord. Because when someone, or yes, when someone is Lord, that is, you follow their commandment. Whatever they say, you have to obey because they are the Lord. Now, I am your friend. I can command you. We have to discuss together. We have to agree because I'm your friend. But if I'm your boss... I tell you what to do. Unless I give you room to advise me. And it's still up to me to take your advice. So that is where lordship comes in. When he's the lord, he can listen to your prayer. can listen to your, even your questions. But he's still the lord. You still have to follow his ways. For you to get what is God to offer you. Or what he has prepared for you. Amen. The Bible says, I have not seen, nor hear, heard, nor have entered to the heart of man things that God has prepared for those who love him. Praise the Lord. Now, there are some things that, uh, you know, I want us to read today. Maybe we just read some uh, scriptures and then we gain some understanding of how this new life is supposed to work. Praise God. Now, to start with, your old life has got um, like a law that rules it. Amen. Your old life. So I will just go through this, you know. Um, any kingdom or country or nation or even group of people have rules and regulations that helps them to govern 
their community. And that's what God did with the Israelites when they came out of Egypt. He gave them the law so that they won't kill each other. So that they will live, you know, in harmony. God gave them the commandment. Now, I will submit to you today that law is not evil. Law is good. You should not be afraid of the law. Because when you hear law, many people are already like, here they go again. Where? That's what's supposed to help you to understand me. Because or else you will live in your own shell. You will live in your own, you know, understanding. You won't understand me. Then we can't have a relationship. Because you don't understand me. But when there is law, you know your, your boundary, what you can do and what you cannot do so that you don't encroach into my own territory. Though we are husband and wife, we still have, you know, our individuality, right? So you can't just step all over me because I'm your wife. You can't just do that. But if we do not have rules, then you can do whatever you like. Then the wife as well can do whatever she likes and... At the end of the day, we're going to kill each other. Amen. So we have nations, country. Then through that, we have custom, traditions. These are ways our people survived. That's the way many societies survive up till now. Because they have custom and tradition. And they're not, you know, they are not actually evil until we bring evil into it. Hallelujah. You kneel down to greet me. Is that a custom? Or a tradition? It's a custom. Right? It's not a tradition. They are interwoven. I know that. You kneel down, you know. Yes, it's a custom. And if it's working for that society, what's the problem? Everybody understand why. You are older than me, I bow down to greet you. I realize that in, uh, in some Asian uh, world where my wife watches you know, all this Korean thing, whether you are young or old, they, 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 they hit each other's head. Okay. They bow to each other. Whether you are the boss or the, you know, they just... And if the space are not enough, let's move on. Hallelujah. But it works for them. Hallelujah. They're enjoying it. Some of them, when you are young and you want to drink in front of adults, you cover your mouth to drink. The adult cannot see your mouth drinking. Oh, wow. That's interesting. So, so every nation, every society have their own ways of doing things. So was our old life. We are already, you know, we are mixed up with tradition, custom. Then we are, you know, mixed up with the law of the land itself. So we have so much going on in our head as we were growing up. We, you know, all of these things were poured into us. Praise God. It was poured into us. So we grew up to know some things. But now, now. You have given your life to Jesus. And there is another way of approach. Amen. To life. Last week I told us, Jesus said that it was said of hold. That you know, you should, uh, uh, you should watch while you're being slapped. You should enjoy it. No, no. He said you should do a, a knife for a knife, tooth for a tooth. It was said of hold. But now. When you are being persecuted, you stand there and watch. Like when you are slapped on the right cheek, Jesus is saying to us now that turn the left one as well. Praise God. So let's read about the law first. Why law is very important. Now, the law, the reason we have to read about it is because both old and new needs law. Okay, so the law is actually very important here. Both hold life and
and the new one have to follow something. Praise God. So now we need to now know what to follow as a new person, a new man in Christ. Praise God. Now, the first one I'm going to bring out is going to be uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, but NLT. So, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. From verse 8. We know that the law is good. Now, we have to pause right now. We know that the law is what? Good. Where are we reading this? Is that in Exodus? Is this Exodus? It's not Leviticus as well. And it's not Job. This is New Testament. And New Testament is telling us that what? So... If you have a negative, uh, you know, mind against the word law, you need to change it right now. Because many people have this shield of once they see law, it's Old Testament. No, it's not Old Testament. It's just a word. A word that we speak. Okay? Describing something for us to understand. Okay? So now, it says, and we, who are the we? From experience, we have come to a conclusion that law is good. Amen. Let's go on. We know that the law is good when, when used correctly. When used correctly. correctly. Amen. So, we, in other words, the law is, can be bad when we misuse it. Go on. For the law was not intended for people who do what is right. Hello. The law is not intended for people who do what is right. Okay, do you want me to break the egg here right now. Why are you so hungry? That the law says that you should not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. What's your business? Mm -hmm. Why are you hungry? You don't commit adultery or fornication. You don't steal. Why are you angry? It's the law. It's the law. No, no. Why are you angry? Go on, you will see more. It is for the people who are lawless and rebellious, who are ungodly and sinful, who consider nothing sacred and defile what is holy, who kill their father or mother or commit other murders. The law is for people who are sexually immoral or who practice homosexuality or are slave traders, liars, Promise you see, breakers. All the ones that we've been saying since we've been like, hmm, me. It's not me, me. But now it says liars. Liars. Promise breakers. Promise breakers. Then you hear that you're like, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's read it again. No, you shouldn't say that. No, it's not true. Something is wrong somewhere. Check yourself. The law is good. So that when you have relationship with someone, that law will make them to live right so that you can have harmony in your relationship hallelujah because if this is not there if they can't now i'm happy that we are reading from the new testament liars pastor we were talking <laughs> this week as he said that you lie so you know i don't lie so hmm you don't lie. Sometimes you lie. I say, how? I say, when you want to hide things from me. I say, I'm not lying. I'm protecting you. Are you with me? I'm not telling you the truth because I don't want to hurt you. I say, but it's still a lie. I say, it's not. And then we are now arguing, it's not. It's a lie, it's not. It's a lie, it's not. 
and truly, 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 when you examine it carefully, it's got an atom of lie in it because you are not telling the truth. Now, if you are truly, truly united, there should be nothing that you cannot tell. Now, many people will have a problem with that, right? Yeah. Should be able to say anything. No. <laughs> you should be able to tell everything. Some things we swallow, but it's not gone down the esophagus. It's still hanging under the tongue. You say you have swallowed it, but you just cough. We will say it. Just cough. <coughs> it will happen. It will be happen. And two years ago, you said you swallowed it. How come it's out again? It was hiding somewhere, you, you know. Sign your cheek. <laughs> How can we be delivered? from this issue of lie. Because many of us, the rest of them, we don't do them. We, we, you know, we, we are okay, but promise breakers? Let your, last week we said that, let your yeah. yes be yes, and your no be no. So you have said yes today, and tomorrow you say no. And if we approach us, I'm, I'm just a human. I'm just a human being. So, I'm not God. Or you could go even say that, I'm not Jesus. You know, Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is God. That's what we say to ourselves. Now, becoming new is a process. I said this last week as well. Until you've, you work it all out to the point that you are not afraid to tell the truth. Though you know your friend, your spouse will be, may not be happy. You took the money out of the family purse. And you bless your mother. You bless your father. And your spouse, ah, something is missing here. Is it? That's a lie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I use it to buy McDonald's. Oh, okay then. Is that fine? You have done what? <laughs> Say you're a chief. <laughs> From the family force. Praise God. You have not told the truth. You need to tell the truth. Even, even I believe on Wednesday we were trying to, you know, go through this. Tell, even before you remove the money. There should have been what? Agreements. I am feeling led to bless my mom. God help us here. I'm feeling led to bless my mom. But because you remembered when she was feeling led to bless her mom, what you said you did not agree then. Now you are already thinking that she will not agree now. So you scheme everything, remove the money to bless your parent, and then said you use it to buy McDonald's for the children. For the, you know, she will not, you will not be angry. I mean, she will not be angry if it's for the children. But your new life does not permit that. We can't do that. Satan is going to come to cheat us, to rob us, even if he is not taking to kill. That's what he's waiting for. He's roaming about to and fro to seek whom he might devour. Yes, you are fasting, praying, but your new life is not new. You are still living in the hold. The door is left ajar for the enemy to do or to come in and die with the family. You say, you say, I didn't say you. To die with who? You are the weakest link. I don't know if you used to watch it in those days. 
You are the weakest link. Bye bye. Praise the Lord. Let's read on because there are still more there. It says what? Where were we? I think it's still nine. Ah, our reader. For the law was not intended for people who do what is right. Mm -hmm. It is for people who are lawless and rebellious. And rebellious. Who are ungodly and sinful. Mm -hmm. Who consider nothing sacred mm -hmm. and defy what is holy. Mm -hmm. Who kill their father uh -huh. or mother uh -huh. or commit other murders. Uh -huh. The law is for people is where who we are were. sexually immoral uh -huh. or who practice homosexuality. Huh? Or who practice homosexuality. What is the image? Sometimes they don't need to tell you. You just know. Right? You just know. When they come around you, you know. To the point that we are trying to remove he or she. Because it's going to offend somebody. Mistakenly, you might just offend somebody. When a man is looking like a lady, you know it's a man, but you have to address the person as a lady. Isn't that confusion in the brain of men? There are many things I can say on this thing, but I'm not going to, so that you won't come and bail me out of jail. But in my country, they say this. Half word is enough for the... Uh, what was the rest? When he reaches the belly, he becomes whole. I borrow last of all my life, but I didn't know I do it. Simple. Let's move. Now, let's finish reading that verse 10. Or are slave traders, uh -huh. liars, liars, promise breakers, uh -huh. or who do anything else that contradicts the wholeness teaching? Okay, the now, teaching. yeah, go on to 11, yeah? That comes from the glorious good news and entrusted to me by our blessed God. Now, what we are trying to teach ourselves now is the good news. Amen. Amen. So, when you know these things, nobody needs to chase you about. Nobody needs to force you to do anything. But when you do anything contrary to that which you have been taught, what happens is that Holy Spirit will convict you. Not to hell. We convict you that what you are doing is not right. So you don't need me to tell you. You know, you, you have the Holy Spirit. His, his job is to tell you these things. Is drinking good? I don't know. The Bible says don't drink. If you are a king, a prominent person, a priest... He says, don't drink. These are the people we look up to. So, and he also says that drinking is for Elias. What's the Elias? Hmm? Fool. Oh, okay. He says that. I didn't say that. That's the Bible. So, I don't need to judge you. I don't need to tell you anything. You have the Holy Spirit to do all that. But it says here that anything that contradicts the awesome teaching, unless you've not heard, if you have not heard of it, that's fine. Many people will still be hungry now. We want to argue this out. Can I tell you the truth? I'm not interested in arguing anything out. If you have the Holy Spirit, pull out a chair. For him in your living room and have a discussion with the Holy Spirit about anything that you think that, you know, it looks like it's not right. But I'm not sure. If you truly want a discussion, you can come, but with open mind. There's no need for us to be arguing. 
You don't need convincing by a man. You need the Holy Spirit to do that. That is the way of the new man. That is the way of Christ. Amen. You being honest to yourself. This morning, my angel came to the office trying to find the clue to where, you know, the one that is good, is this good, is this not good, we are going front and back, you know, like, yeah, it's, it's too revealing, it's not revealing. Then the one that uh, she wanted to wear, by, a, by, 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 by the admission, this person now, my angel, now said, but I feel naked though, excuse me, all covered up, nothing revealing, but you're still feeling what? Naked. Then we were about three in the room, there were four. We now said, that, wow, you don't need us to say anything. You have your, your answer. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. If you claim that you have the Holy Spirit, this is what it does. That is his work. That is what it does. If I slap you and I turn back to go, the Holy Spirit will say, what? You did what? If you do have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, what, did, what, what happened? Then you have two people to apologize to immediately. First to who? To your neighbor, then to the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's not the way it should be. To the Holy Spirit. First, you didn't slap the Holy Spirit. Did you slap the Holy Spirit? Why are you apologizing to the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit trying to slap? No. You slapped your neighbor. You insulted your neighbor, not the Holy Spirit. So the person to apologize to is what? It's your neighbor. Then, you can now turn to the Holy Spirit for help. I didn't know what happened to me. I didn't know what, what came over me. I'm sorry I behaved that way. Then you now begin to... But first, you need to apologize. Some people think that they can do whatever they like and go to God. Or if you are living according to the scripture, if you are living... The, when you approach at the throne of, you know, of grace, I say, Lord, I am really sorry. I insulted my husband. I was angry. God will say, hmm, Holy Spirit, speak. Holy Spirit will say, wow, you know better. We've been through this. So can you go back and make amends with your husband? Just go back. Say, no, 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 Holy Spirit, please go for me. Please go. I say, no. No, no, he will follow you. Why? Because it's in you. That's why we follow you. Because it's in you. It will help you to humble yourself to say, I am sorry. The dinner you asked for, this is it. Let us move on. Praise God. Now, the reason the law was like uh, a thing that many people reject is because it was hard to follow. Amen. The law of Moses was very tough. Very hard. I mean, come on now. Even in this congregation, if you wanted to follow the law of Moses, we would have killed some people by now. And we, and we would not be guilty of murder because of the law that guides us. Amen. Many would have been pulled outside and we would pick up stones and stone them to death. And we still do all glory to God. And Jesus said, come on now. I'm bringing you a new way. A new way. You are killing each other too much. Forget about, uh, you know, the sacrifices that, uh, you know, brings remission of, uh, of sin and, uh, and all that. Now, I mean, the relationship between ourselves, that is what is really important. If you love me not, you will not do some things that you are doing to me. You will not try 
to destroy my image in the presence of your so-called friends that you want to join their clique and because they are talking down on me and you think it's your, it's your good access to enter their clique and then you now join them to bring me down. If you love me, you won't do that. And Jesus came and now says that love, that he says there's only two law. Jesus even said that I have not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill them. And this is the way I want to fulfill it. I'm going to teach you a new way. Amen. So we want to, we want to read some, some other ways. I think uh, Ecclesiastes 8.2 said something. Uh, 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 sorry, 8.2. Ecclesiastes 8.2 says, I say, keep the king's commandment for the sake of your oath to God for the sake of your oath to God. You have given your life to God. Now you need to keep the commandment so that what you said to God, you won't break it. The promise you made, you won't break it. Praise God. The law is made for sinners. Like we read earlier, I hope you were following then. Now, in Romans 7, 12, Romans 7, 12, therefore the law is holy And the commandment, holy, just as, sorry, and just and good. I read again. Therefore, the law is holy. Because it's coming out from the Holy One himself. Amen. And the commandment, holy. The commandments, holy, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as your self. Above this, there is no other law or prophet. But it says there that it's just and it's also good. So from now on, when you hear law, whether in the church or out there, you should do what? Look into it and try to understand it. It's good. It's for you. It's supposed to help you and I to have a better relationship. Now, the law is good and just. Good, just and good. Why? Because it prevents us from crossing each other, killing each other, doing harm to one another. That's why we have the law. But now, the law in Christ, let me now move because of my time. I have to now move. Now, Christ came because the old way, the old life, before we gave our life to Christ, was so hard for many of us to fulfill. Then, they couldn't. Even now, we are still trying <laughs> to work it out. But Christ now came, says that I'm bringing you a new way. Praise God. So now, this new law, I mean, you can write down John 16, 7. John 16, 7. That was when Jesus says to them that I'm telling you the truth. Listen, I'm telling you the truth. It is to your own advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Praise God. Then our memory verse for this year, Zechariah 4, 6 says, So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of us. I'm going somewhere. Then in John 14, 15, John 14, 15, he says, If you love me, Keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father that he will give you another helper that he may abide, abide in glory, abide with you forever. Same chapter, John 14, 25 and 27. John 14, 25. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I 
said to you. 27, peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Hallelujah. Did you write all, all that down? Okay. Now, why are we on the issue of Holy Spirit? Why? Because it's not easy to follow the law. Whether old or new. Whether old or new. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, we find ourselves short in fulfilling them. Because there is something that we call flesh. Flesh wants to gratify in itself. It wants to have its way. Flesh wants to be the one, of, you know, up front. It wants to show off. That means, you are my wife. I don't want you to outshine me. I have to always outshine you. Okay? You have to submit. Then we use the word wife. Submit yourself to your whole husband. Yeah, 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 la, 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 la. But you didn't see where he says that submit one to. Let's stay on that for a minute. Wife, submit yourself to your whole husband. Why would you think God would say such a thing like that? Why? This is the answer I always give. You have a car. It's got one steering. Only one driver can drive the car. And you are two people, two drivers in the car. You both have experience. You are good drivers. But the issue is that somebody has to drive at a particular time. Because both of you cannot drive. Two people cannot exist in a relationship without the help of the Holy Spirit. It's not possible. Because as, as human beings, we have this ego. We have this uh, thing that even as, as, a, as a woman, come on now, you are a graduate. In, in the, you know, your parents brought you up with all their strength, everything. So a man will just come from anywhere and pick you and now make you a slave. You will be there, but you will not be in love anymore. You are angry, but you can't talk. Because people from my role, we keep telling you that you are the wife. You know what I mean? You know what I yes, I'm submitting, but inside of me, I'm burning. Am I speaking to somebody here? So, even as a woman, you want to submit, but submit one to another. Come to a place of understanding with the help of the Holy Spirit. Everybody knows their role. When you know your role, then no problem. I love to clean. So I clean. If you come to my house, I'm cleaning. I'm not a cleaning freak. but I just can't stand it. So, imagine me now saying, I'm the husband. Honey, go and clean. Well, honey, say, come. Come and speak to all these People that I'm speaking with, which I don't want to. I don't like speaking to people. She deals with all that. And I'm okay with that. We all know her roles. The only time we fight, no, we don't fight, we argue. We discuss. It's when she wants me to do what I don't want to do now. Michael, right? Eh? What I, I want to do it, but not now. And you want and you want me to do it now. I, said, I will do it later. But we need then we men we say that you are nagging me. You are nagging me. You do the same. You say you want to eat. Was that the time that she wants to feed you? Huh? We have to compromise. We have to come to understand each other's, you know, frailty, and then we help each other to keep going. You balance things up. You balance things up. That's how we we grow up. Thirty-three years now, 
in marriage. You tell me it's easy. It's quite very easy. Wait, long suffering. <laughs> Kindness. You have to. It wants to stay there. But that place of discussion, you have to invite the Holy Spirit. Because everybody have a point. If you think you have a point, wait until the other person as well bring their point. And you will realize, eh, but, uh, not but, eh, nothing. Discuss it, come to an agreement, and God will help all of us. Amen. So that's what we call transformation. That only comes from the power of the Holy Spirit. So for us to come from old to new, we need the power of the Holy Spirit to do the work for us. Amen. Let's read uh, 1 Samuel chapter 10. I know we read Romans 12 already, so you know where it says, I beseech you, dear, dear brethren, you know, in the mercy of God, present yourself only acceptable unto the Lord. For 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses, uh, we read verse 6 first. Verse 6, yes. First Samuel 10, 6. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. Now, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And you will prophesy. And you will prophesy. With them. With them. And be turned into another man. And be what? Turned into another man. From whole to new, you need that power to turn you. And you have to allow him. You have to surrender to allow, because it's not going to force you to turn. No, but because of what you know already, because of what you've been taught, what will happen is that when you see the Holy Spirit doing his work, you will just say, do your work. Do your work. Just tell me. And you will be do what? I mean, you will be what? Turned into another man. Okay, let's read verse 9. So it was. So it was. When he had turned his back to go from Samuel. After hearing the word of the Lord, the prophecy, and turned his back to go from Samuel. Uh -huh, that God gave him another heart. God gave him another heart. Uh -huh. And all those signs came to pass that day. Hallelujah. Amen. Transformation is the work of the Holy Spirit. When we allow him to do his work. We will be changed. We will be turned. Our heart will be turned. And we will become another. Or I would just say a new man. Now, that word looks as if it's uh, instant. Like, boom. You are changed. That's true. But what is done there on that day will not be seen by anybody until you begin to live it out. Act it out. And that's when they will now say that there is a change. You have changed. You have changed. Because now you are following the new way. You are trying to mend your ways. You are trying to now do what is right. That we call right standing. That you don't need anybody to tell you. But you just know that you should not bout mouth anybody. You just know it because of what you are hearing, because of the Holy Spirit helping you day in, day out. Praise God. So when there is transformation, transformation, then there will be a change, visible change. Okay. Visible change. You can't claim that, you know, I've been changed. I'm transformed. Yeah, well, you're still doing what you used to do. You're still doing what you used to do. Many wives now, many wives or hus husband, I would just use wife for, you know, for, for discussion's sake. Their husband cannot say one word, they will say 20 words before they gave your life to Christ. Now you are a child of the living God. You've been taught of the Lord. You have the fruit of the Spirit, you know, gentleness, you know, joy, peace, you know, patience and all those things. Now you have it. But when your husband says, ah, ah, I will, you already said, 
go to, you know, you have said about 40 words. You have not changed. You're still the same. You're still the same. If you used to lie, now you are, you've heard the word of God, you have the Holy Spirit, and you still lie as if it's nothing, then you've not changed. You're still the same. And Jesus is your Savior. Oh, yes, I said it. Jesus is still your Savior. But you are not fulfilling. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's read. Uh, let me see. John 16, 7. No, we've, we've read that. Uh, now, Titus 2. Whoa. Titus 2. I'm rounding up now. Don't worry. I'll just... We leave the rest to you when you call me back to come and preach. Are you there? Two, let's read from verse 11. Verse 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, the reason we are reading that is because we all have to seek to become new man in God, in Christ. We have to seek. That's why it says, work out your salvation. You are saved but you need to work it out, allow the Holy Spirit to keep helping you to change your ways, to change your ways, not for anybody, but for God. Amen. And as well, for you to fulfill purpose or not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then you will stop being, uh, 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 you know, this toy called um, yo-yo. That is going up and down. Up and down, up and down. Then you will be stable, immovable, always abiding. Amen. Because you are working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Hallelujah. Now, the issue of custom, of tradition, you know, we now come to play. Some of them you will have to still embrace. Yes. You will be like, but we are Christian, yes. And Yoruba as well. Or Hebrew as well. So because now you are a Christian, you can't kneel down to greet your elders again because you are a Christian. I'm a Christian. I don't need down for anybody. Wow. Your elders will look at you as well. As arrogant. Now, custom, tradition, there are so many. Like now, if I want to wear African clothes now, it's not, it's not, is, is that a sin against God? No. So, because I'm a Christian, I don't do a shabby. Oh. If you are not doing a shabby, it's because you just don't want to do it. Not because you are a Christian. Amen. And, you have, and, it, and it's your right. But don't say, because I'm a Christian. But there are some custom and tradition that you have to let go. Because you are a Christian. I don't worship him. You are now a Christian. You belong to God. Whether they are doing, you, doing it in your household or not, you are now a Christian. You don't bow down to any craving image. Simple. Love the Lord your God with all your heart is what you are on now. 
Now, if my, if, <laughs> if I, um, okay, thank God I have kids already and they're grown up. But now, if you're young and then you are married and you are waiting on the Lord and you are the man and your mom now comes around and I say, you know, this happened in our lineage. Sometimes you have to marry two wives. When you have three wives, you know, then, then you know, it works for your father. He won't, uh, well, you say, yes, I'm a Christian. I don't live in adultery. Hello? You politely say what? To who? Why that? Because it's always the mother. You, you tell mom, thank you for your concern, for your advice, but I'm a Christian. Things like this is not what we're being taught to do. I can't marry two wives. So we are believing God. Wait. Now, I know I have four girls already. And my wife is still willing to go on. So by the grace of God, we might have a, you know, another boy. And when, when, when it's another, another child and it's the girl again, if your wife is still willing to go on, you can keep trying. But when you understand the Bible, you will know that whether girl or boy, this is God's will for our family. Mom and dad love you. So if, mom, no. Dad, I promise you this. I'm going to talk to my wife or I'm going to talk to my husband. Dad, that when, when our child grows old and gets married, we still keep your name. Because it's all about name, isn't it? We still keep your name. Is that okay, mom? Is that okay, dad? Eh, mom, let's put it. I love you, mom. You get out of You don't have to fight. You just have to stand your ground. Let's stand to our feet. I'll let you go. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. What is our goal? What is our goal? Colossians 3. That was our goal. Let me see if I can give you a fish. I mean, uh, yeah, Philippians, 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 Philippians. Now, let's read Philippians. Then uh, somebody can open it in uh, NLT, but uh, let me see. From verse 1 to 4, Philippians 2. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ. Hallelujah. Now, read Romans. R read Romans 8.2. Read Romans 8.2. One sec. Romans 8.2. I skipped that one uh, and I think I shouldn't have. Romans 8. From 2. Praise God. Then we come back to that uh, Philippians. Are you there? Read. And because you belong to him. Now, hear this. Now, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Now, hear this. And because you belong to him. The power of the life-given spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. Three. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So, God did what the law could not, could not do. He sent his own son in a holy body, like the bodies we, we sinners have. Mm -hmm. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. Hallelujah. Now, if you read that, if you read that in, um, in New King James, hear what he says. You say, it says there that the power, right? The power, but in New King James, it says the law. Law is powerful. Law is powerful. It's power on its own. Hallelujah. So it says that for the law of the spirit of life, the law of the spirit of life in where? In Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So this new man 
has to allow the power of the Holy Spirit to help him to come, I mean, to walk in that newness, in the way that he wants us to live. Now, let us read that uh, uh, Philippians 2 as we round it up right now. Praise God. Philippians 2, 1. Yes. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort? From now, I think, I think we all have to hear this because many people don't want to be Christian or follow Christ because they believe it's not easy. It is hard, but it shouldn't if you know what to do and how to walk it. Read. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Uh -huh. Any comfort from his love? Uh -huh. Any fellowship together in the spirit? Uh -huh. Are your hearts t tender and compassionate? Uh -huh. Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, uh -huh. loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Uh -huh. Don't be selfish. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Whoa. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Uh -huh. Don't look out only for your own interest, uh -huh. but take an interest in others too. Praise God. Yes. You must have that. No, no, sorry. You can go. You can go and read the rest. What we have, what we've been encouraged to do is to live together in unity because that is how we can keep moving forward, defeating all the schemes of the enemy, all, the, all his plans, because he, I'm telling you, there are roadblocks ahead for everybody. But because we are working together, one, we chase a thousand, and two, ten thousand. Amen. When we are working together as a unit, nothing will be able to stop us. Nothing will be able to stop us from achieving our goals and purposes. Now, hear this. If you share with me, because I love you, if you, if you share with me your goals, your dreams, I'm not going to try to what? To stop it. I will want to, you know, help you to achieve your goals. But in the body of Christ, we are scared of one another. We can't pray together because you will overheard my prayer. You will hear what I'm saying unto the Lord. And I don't want you to know because I, I don't trust you. I don't trust you. You are crying in the closet. Nobody knows about it. You are aching. No brethren. Nobody can actually say that we pray together over this. We all go through. The only issue is that it's not the same thing. We all have our issues. I have mine. I have my, I, you know, I was sleeping today and uh, I saw in my dream, I woke up and I like, no way. What's the meaning? No way. Because I saw something in my dreams. I'm like, I'm coming from, from outside and I saw the house door opened. I know that I'm like, so I was with my wife in that dream and I said, how would I? Then I saw another door open. I saw another door open. Then I saw some files, kids, you know, files, you know, all around. So already I knew that it's not good. And I woke up. That's not a good dream, is it? Because I woke up. Because you should allow me to go inside, to pack everything, and make sure that everything is fine. So I said, God Almighty. So I woke up and I said, <laughs> Oh, you don't speak English. Oh, I just spoke in English. The thief will not enter. Spiritual thief of physical will not visit me, not enter. I come against it in the name of Jesus. I decree, I declare, I declare, I declare. I declare. I say, now, now I forbid it. It will never happen. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. And when I pray, I believe my prayer has been answered. And I'm not in the experience experience of evil to happen to me. So it will never happen. Because you see, you pray, but you are still expecting it to happen. You cancel this. Cancelled! Begin to move as if nothing happened. Pray and tell God. Help me, O oh God, to be like you. 
Help me to understand your word. Help me to move in your word. Help me go to move in the knowledge that you have given me. Come on, pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. That the Holy Spirit will continually help me to understand that which you have called me to do in the name of Jesus.